Hey, what's up coders? Welcome to One Little Coder. Do you use Jupyter Notebook? If you do, this video is for you because there is a threat alert that is issued that you might be seeing the first Python ransomware attack targeting Jupyter Notebooks. Yes, you read it correct. There is a security company that has published this blog post very recently. I think it was it was published a couple of days back. This they suspect is the first Python ransomware attack targeting Jupyter Notebook. So if you or your organization is using Jupyter Notebook, then this is something you should definitely read or watch. So watch this video and then I would link this YouTube and uh, link the blog post in the YouTube description. You can check it out. If you are not familiar with Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Notebook is the notebook environment a lot of uh, data practitioners use to create their prototypes, data analysis, build models. This this ideally would look like this. You can do here whatever you want. So you can say two plus two four. Uh, you can change the kernel. You can do all these things. But what happens sometimes is that what the security company they have figured out that sometimes people do not you do not have proper authentication for Jupyter Notebook. And this Jupyter Notebook now is exposed on the Internet. So if somebody like right now, this is a local Jupyter Notebook, but sometimes when it is hosted on a server, sometimes people keep it exposed, keep it open. And that can be used as a vulnerability to attack your machine, to implant a ransomware on your machine. And I'm going to show you what they have done like to figure it out. First, they set up a honeypot. What is a honeypot? A honeypot is in, in simple English, a honeypot is like an artificially exposed data that is controlled. So instead of having a real data, they artificially expose a data or something to the external internet uh, where they have all these hackers and all these people and they expect them to come and then try to attack them. So this honeypot is similar to that. So this company had set up a honeypot and what they figure out is really, really shocking for me as well. So this is the process of ransomware attack. So there is a honeypot that was set up and some attacker, a hacker came to attack that honeypot and that is how they learned what's exactly happening here. First, the attacker comes and tries to figure out the exposed Jupyter notebook. This exposed Jupyter notebook is already available on internet and it's quite easy to figure out. So Jupyter notebook also lets you control the terminal. You can run shell commands using Jupyter notebook. Anybody who has used Jupyter notebook knows this. So attacker comes, looks for the exposed Jupyter notebook, takes control of the exposed Jupyter notebook, opens the terminal of that particular machine or server using the Jupyter notebook, now starts downloading applications or libraries that to support the attack that they want to do. And finally, they create a Python script. This Python script is going to encrypt everything that you have got. So this Python script is going to encrypt everything that you have got and then it's going to delete all the other files that are not encrypted and it's also going to self delete itself. So now the only way for you to unlock these files is to pay money, pay ransom for this to this attacker so that that attacker will probably give you the key with which you can decrypt and then start using the files. The attack is quite, you know, this is quite intelligent. Attacker takes control of the Jupyter Notebook, opens the terminal, downloads, let's say, uh, malicious repositories or libraries that look legitimate, of course, it's legitimate. And then they start installing a create a Python script. And then that Python script goes to the directory that you are of some interest. And then it encrypts all the files in the directory. And then it deletes the remaining unencrypted files. And also it deletes the file itself. The python script itself so you don't have any trace of such a file coming in and then creating all these things and now only way for you to gain access or gain control of your mission is when you pay money the ransom to the attacker so now why is this serious according to this company this is probably the first time that they have seen the hacker attacking or hacker using jupyter notebook targeting jupyter notebook and then gaining access to data first the second thing is Jupyter Notebook is something the data professionals use. So it's highly likely the environment where Jupyter Notebook is present that they have got some important data from the organization. So that this is this is quite serious. 
Now you might ask me, hey, uh, do you even know if anybody keeps Jupyter Notebook open? All the time I just go cre create Jupyter Notebook on my local machine. You know, I don't think that people actually keep it open. Now, if you think like that, the this company also ran a scan. So Shodan is a platform where you can run scans like query. And then they figured out that out of the scan that they did, about 200 internet facing Jupyter notebook without any authentication. So they figured out on Shodan that there are 200 at this point, like when this article was written, at least 200 internet facing like publicly available on the internet Jupyter notebook without any authentication, which means anybody can go access it. Maybe some of these could be honeypots, like how they set up but not everything could be honeypot, which means somebody like people have got their Jupyter notebook open on the internet for anybody to go search and find out. Like you can, if you have access to Shodan, you can yourself find it out. And the hackers can actually take control of the machine using this. Now, why did I make this video? First, I wanted you to know that this ransomware attack is targeting Jupyter notebook as somebody who works with data science works in data science, works with data, works in a data science organization. I think this is quite serious. A lot of times we go on creating Jupyter notebook just like this Untitled 364. We don't we don't actually give the respect, the due respect that Jupyter notebook deserves. So we just keep on creating it. And you know, my belief is my belief is that most of the data professionals are not very serious about IT security or data security and all these kind of things that companies usually focus on only during trainings. So now the problem is now you're going to create a back door or you're going to create or open the front door of your server or your company's machine to hackers to come and attack if you leave your Jupyter notebook unauthenticated open on the internet. So if you are somebody who uses Jupyter notebook as part of your professional life or hobby life, you need to pay attention whether you have got authentication set up. You need to pay attention if anybody can access it. That's the first thing. The second thing is please spread the word to your organization, your friends, poors and data community that you belong to. We, we need to spread the word about this thing because this is serious. Ransomware attacks are serious. If the hacker takes control of your machine, then, then you know, you, you basically cannot do anything. It's like your Excel file with password and you don't have password of this. You, you're just done with that. So you need to focus on spreading the word of this. So anybody who, whom you know or whom hears from you can also improve their system, can also improve their company security just by reading this blog post. So finally, they have got a couple of recommendations what you can do here. And they have also got some general security recommendations. Mainly, you need to identify existing vulnerabilities or ports or entry points that can that can um, that that can give access to the hacker. And they have got specific Jupyter notebook related recommendations. The first being is use a token or an authentication to get control um, to get access to the Jupyter notebook or data development application. So there are a lot of different recommendations. I'm not going to go over all these things. This blog post will be linked in the YouTube description. Once again, I would like to thank, I think the first time I would like to thank Asaf Murag, the, the, the person who wrote this blog post from Aqua blog. So thanks Aqua blog for writing this blog post. This blog post says first Python ransomware attack targeting Jupyter notebooks. This could become popular, but we it's, it, it's in our hand to make sure that our Jupyter notebooks are really safe password protected, um, there's some kind of authentication so that the hacker cannot take control of Jupyter Notebook. Neither the hacker can, hacker can access our machine or server where the Jupyter Notebook is hosted. Please spread the word. I hope this video was helpful to you. The link will be in the YouTube description. Stay safe. Happy coding. Peace.